Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be making this cork zipper pouch. I think this is really fun. It uses the very trendy cork fabric. It's pretty easy to make. A beginning sewist could make this. It just requires a zipper and other than that this is just some straight stitching. Nothing too hard about this. I'm going to show you how to make some fun zipper tabs on the end like you see right here. I think this packs a lot of punch. It's a fully lined zipper pouch. Now I did not make this on the Cricut but you could absolutely use the Cricut Maker and cut out all of your pieces. It is a series of rectangles and very simple. I will give you all of the dimensions in case you'd like to make your own design space pattern but for those of you who don't have a machine we're going to cut this by hand so let's get started okay so this is the bag that i made earlier you can see that it has this really fun cork fabric cork fabric is kind of something that's really trendy right now this is some cork fabric that i found at my local quilt shop i also got a couple other colors and this one has some gold flex in it it's very easy to sew through you treat it just like fabric so that's what we're using here. I have it linked in the description below the video as well as pretty much everything we're using. Um, and then you're going to need some quilting cotton for the top and whatnot. This is a option if you want to add a keychain on the side of it. I do have a video on how to make this particular um, keychain or a, one that's very similar. And it's totally optional as well as this little tab right here that you can hang something on such as a keychain or a wrist strap or whatever you like. So this part's optional but we're going to make the basic bag and I'll show you how to make it with this tab. And then you can see I also have zipper tabs up on the top so we're going to include how to do that. This is a fully lined zipper pouch and we've got a little pocket in there. You can see we're going to do that as well. So without further ado, let me show you exactly what you're going to need to create a similar pouch. So I've written all of the measurements down right here just in case you want to make a screenshot and make your list or print this out or refer to it. These are the sizes that you're going to need. For our cork pieces, we're going to need two pieces, five inches by nine inches. Two pieces of cork, five by nine. For your outer fabric which is going to be the top portion you're going to need two pieces of four by nine four inches by nine inches two pieces that's going to be your outer fabric the top of the bag so this is going to be our bag for our lining we're going to need two pieces nine and a half by nine so it's going to be nine wide by nine and a half tall nine wide by nine and a half tall then for if you want to put a pocket on the inside like I did in this one and again this is optional you don't have to put a pocket in it but if you want to put a pocket in you're going to need one piece that measures five by eight and a half five by eight and a half if you want to add the little tab on the side you're just going to use and I just pulled a scrap piece of fabric whatever you have um, you're just going to take a piece of fabric and fold it in fold it in fold it in half. You guys have done this a thousand times if you've followed any of my videos. And then you're just going to sew down the side to keep that secure, which is going to make a little tab like this. And then you're going to need a D ring. And you're going to need a zipper that is at least nine inches long. Mine's longer, but at least nine inches, no shorter. And then you're going to need a couple of two by two. And again, this doesn't have to be exact tabs for your zipper ends and you can either match the outer fabric or you could match the lining fabric. I'm going to match the lining fabric or you could use the cork if you want which is what I did here. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare our outer fabric. So we're going to take one piece, lay it on top of one of the outer pieces so that the pretty sides are touching and you can clip that together. And you're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to sew that together right along that top edge and do the same with the second piece. Pretty sides together, quarter inch seam allowance, sew that all the way across. Once you have both of your pieces sewn together, you sewed it just like that, you're going to lift it up, press it, and then you're going to run a stitch right along that fold. So again, you're going to have it like this and you're going to fold it up. So your cork's not going to get folded, but the fabric is right on that seam. 
and then you're going to stitch that seam down just as close to it as you feel comfortable doing. Okay, so now we've got that sewn together and we've got our lining pieces and they should be right about the same, same size. So what we wanna do is line up everything and if they aren't the same size, then trim it up so that they are. But mine are pretty close. And now what we're going to do is measure one and a half inches in Turn my ruler around here so you guys can read it. So we're going to measure one and a half inches in and one and a half inches down and we're going to mark that square. Same thing over here, one and a half inches in, one and a half inches down and make a mark. And again, I've got my T's up here so that I know this is the top of my fabric. You want to make sure that this is the nine inch width. Okay, so now that we have those two squares done, I'm going to cut my two interfacing pieces or my two lining pieces together. And I'm going to mark these the same way, inch and a half down, inch and a half in. I want this to be pretty precise. Same thing over here, inch and a half by inch and a half. If you want, you can just make an inch and a half square and use that as a template. And I'm just going to use some scissors and we're going to make sure these are lined up. Both pieces are lined up really well and we're just going to snip out those corners. I'm going to do the same thing on all four corners, the lower corners. And you could save these and use for your tabs if you wanted. All right, so now you've got two pieces that look like this. Now we're going to work on our zipper. Now again, this piece is, let's measure one more time, nine inches across, that's right. So we want to make our zipper to be an inch shorter than that, eight inches. So I'm going to use my fabric pen and the first thing I'm going to do is trim off some of this excess, not a lot, but just right about that much from those zipper ends. I'm going to put it on my self-healing mat and I'm going to measure over eight inches. And actually, I think I'm going to go about seven and three quarters. So our bag was nine. We're going to back off an inch and a quarter. So we're going to measure right at seven and three quarters and make a mark. Okay, so that's going to be how long our actual zipper is. And that should be just about right. So once you make that mark, you can cut this off. Make sure your zipper pull is in between the end of the zipper and your mark. And we're just going to snip that off. Throw that aside. All right. Now we're going to make our zipper tabs. And this is where you can decide whether you want to use cork for your end, whether you want to use your same fabric that you're using up here, or you want to use your lining fabric. I actually think I'm going to go ahead and use the cork. Now I'm going to show you the cheater method to do this, especially if you're using the cork. This works a lot easier. All you're going to do is line up the tab and the zipper just like this. It's going to be bigger than you need. This is just the square that we cut out of here. I'm just going to line it up just like this. So the teeth of the zipper and the pretty side of the cork are facing each other. And then you're just going to take it over your sewing machine and you're going to run a stitch right across that zipper to secure that into place. Don't worry that it's hanging off the end. That's no big deal at all. So we're going to do that. 
Okay, so you can see I went ahead and stitched the cork to the zipper. So if I open it up like this, and I kind of finger crease that cork, I have my zipper tab sewn down. Now, if you want, you can take it back over and sew another stitch right across there just to hold that seam down. Okay, so I have stitched that an extra seam right across the top. It looks just like this from the bottom. And that's perfect. So now what you want to do is pull your zipper pull down a little bit. You want to take this over to your sewing machine or you can do it by hand and just put a little tack stitch across here just to hold your zipper together. And then we're going to repeat the process and add a tab on to this end of the zipper. So go ahead and stitch this close. I just put it on zigzag and put it on a, I put it on the widest zigzag and then put it um, on the stitch length. I put it to zero. So then it'll just zigzag that close. Okay, so you can see I just tacked it just real lightly, just enough to keep it together so that it makes it a little bit easier to work with. So this time I'm going to put the zipper tab down. And if you have the uh, metal pieces of your zipper still in there, make sure you go just below it so that you don't have to stitch over that. And again, you're gonna put pretty sides together. The zipper teeth side and the pretty side of the cork are facing each other. Stitch that right across the top, fold it back, top stitch, so that it looks just like this one. Okay, so it should be looking something like this. Now what you're going to do is just take your scissors and trim that straight. Perfect. All right, so now we're going to line this up with the outer fabric. So take one piece and put it aside. And I'm going to cut these so that they are even with my zipper, or just slightly over. Cork's not going to fray, so we don't have to worry about having raw edges. So now this should give you about one half inch from either end. And I'm using my self healing mat to center this. If you want, you could fold this in half, fold this in half, crease it, match up your centers. I'm just using my self healing mat to measure it. And now you can pen or clip that into place. Or if you want, you can use this tape. I love using this for this type of a project. Just make sure you get it on there straight and put it on the upper edge. And then you're going to peel the backing off. And again, I'll have all this linked in the description below the video. And what this is going to let you do is temporarily hold this zipper in place while you sew it, sew it down. So again, I'm going to half an inch. Got about a half an inch there. So it should look like this. This is the pretty side up, zipper teeth down, and your zipper is lined up with the edge of the fabric. So you're going to stitch with your zipper foot right down the center of this side of the zipper. All right, so I have my zipper sewn into place just like this. If I lifted it up like this, you can start to see that it's taking shape I'm going to put it back down the way it was and we're going to take one of our lining pieces making sure that the squares that we cut out are at the bottom we're going to line that right on top then you can take that over to the sewing machine and just follow your previous stitch line if you stitch it from the back side you'll be able to see it follow that previous stitch line and stitch that side down Okay, so now it looks like this, my zipper sandwiched in between. You can finger press that down. And then I like to put the other side in before I do any top stitching. So let's work on that. We're going to take our other outer piece. We're going to take this piece and it's going to go outer piece to outer piece touching. So you should be looking at the lining face down. Your zipper pole should be facing that side. Again, I'm going to put some 
this tape on my zipper just to help me keep everything lined up. You can go all the way across if you want. I just use enough to get me going. Oops, I don't think it's stuck. You have to give it a little bit of a rub with your fingernail to get it to stick. There we go. All right, so now we're going to line this piece up with the outer piece and making sure that our edges of our fabric are lining up. Trying to keep everything neat and in place. And again, you're going to stitch that down. All right, so we've sewn that down. Now it looks like this. We need to add our other piece of lining. I'm going to flip it back over. We're going to put our lining piece down and put this on top so that our zipper is sandwiched in between. If you want to look at it from this side, this is what we had. Put lining to lining, turn it over, meet up our edges. If you want to use some more tape, go for it and then you can follow that line that you just made and stitch this lining piece on okay so if you open it up like this you should have a zipper in the middle you should have your outer fabrics on one side and your lining fabrics on the other side you've got a little bit of a gap here and a little bit of a gap here that's exactly what you want now you want to open it up and sort of finger press these seams open on both sides and then take it over to your ironing surface and iron it flat be careful with your cork you don't want your iron sitting on your cork but iron this flat and then you want to take it over to the sewing machine and top stitch as close to the zipper as you can get but on the fabric on both sides I like to use a little bit longer stitch usually about a 3.5 for my top stitching but use whatever you feel comfortable with and here's what it looks like top stitch. So you can see I top stitch on both sides. And we have something that looks like this. Okay, so now you want to add your D-ring if you're going to add it. So you're going to put your little uh, four piece, four folded piece of fabric inside the D-ring or loop the D-ring in it and then decide where you want it. I'm going to put it on the left and I'm going to put it this way pin that into place if you want to add the pocket you can go ahead and do that as well this is going to be your pocket so what you would do is fold this in half you're going to sew three sides leaving a small opening for turning once you have it sewn, again, we sewn that pretty sides together, so we're looking at the wrong side. We're going to snip each corner, making sure we don't snip into our stitching lines. Then you're going to reach inside and flip that right side out. Use a bone folder, a chapstick, whatever you want to use, a point turner and just stick it inside that hole. Make sure you get these corners pushed out nice and square. All four corners. And then you're going to notice that this wants to close naturally where you left that opening for turning. Take it over to your sewing machine and or your ironing surface and iron it but you don't have to worry about closing this yet just iron it and then top stitch on the opposite end of your opening or the long end okay so i have stitched along the opposite end from my opening my opening's down here it's still open it's supposed to be and now I'm just going to center this on my lining piece. And again, you want to make sure that you get just the lining. So you want to put everything else back up. 
And you can absolutely put this pocket on before you even install the zipper. I kind of just forgot about it, but it doesn't really matter. You can do it either way, but just make sure you only attach it to the lining piece, not the rest of it. So I'm just going to pin this into place. Make sure it's straight. You can absolutely take your time and measure and eyeball, but for the sake of the video, I'm just going to roughly do this. And then I'm going to take it over the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along this edge, right across this edge, which will also close that opening that we use to turn it right side out and back up this edge. You might want to back stitch a little bit um, at the top and the, or the beginning and the end of the top of the pocket so that that's a, have a little bit more reinforcement. So again, one, two, three, back stitching at the beginning and the end, sewing through just the lining layer. All right, so we have our pocket sewn into place. Now we can distribute our front and our back. We've got our tab into place. If you wanna add a label or anything, this is the time to add it. And actually, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my label on the inside. I'm gonna put my label right there. I'll put another clip on. I'm just hooking that to the lining. And I forgot to show this in the video, but very important, open your zipper at this time. Make sure that it's open all the way or most of the way. All right, so now what we're going to do is bring our lining pieces together and our outer pieces together. So it looks like this. Let me show you that again. So this is what we've been working with. Bring your lining together, lift it up, and your outer together. So the next thing you want to do is line up your bottom. And I'm starting with the outer side. I'm going to make sure these side seams line up right here. Clip. Same thing on this side, because this is going to show they don't line up when the bag is finished. Make sure that you can use as many clips or pens as you want. I wouldn't use pens on the cork side. And now we're going to look at the zipper. Now this is a trick with the zipper is you want to push the seams that you had open towards the lining. So see how the seams are where we joined? We're going to push those seams towards the lining and make sure that they are lined up. And clip from there. All right, here is my little label that I put in there. I'm just going to open that clip up and clip both of those together. Again, we're going to make sure this is lined up. I'm going to line up the bottom. Same thing over here. I'm going to push those two seams together towards the lining, making sure that they line up. Clip. Clip. All right. So it should look something like this. Now what you want to do is use a fabric marker or straight pins, whatever you want. And on the lining side, just put a couple of marks about, oh, I don't know, mine are, let's see, three inches apart. And this is a no sew zone. You're not going to sew between those two marks. So that's just a reminder not to sew there. So what we're going to do is sew from here to here non-stop when you get to the zipper you probably shouldn't 
be sewing on the zipper. If you do sew on the zipper or the tab that we put on the end, it's okay, it's gonna turn out all right. But if you can see here, what I did, mine is just shy of that tab. And that gives me a really neat finish. Now, if you don't, if you do sew on the tab, your fabric's just gonna come up a little bit and that's absolutely fine. You kind of have to get a feel for it and it takes, you have to go really slow. But I try to stop just shy of hitting that, but I have absolutely gone over it a little bit and it looks just fine. But I kind of like the look of it just stopping shy. And that's the beauty of the cork is you don't have to worry about those raw edges. Now, if you're doing this with zipper um, or doing zipper tabs with fabric, absolutely, you can make them just go longer and just sew right over them. And it will become part of the end of the zipper and it'll still look really, really nice. But with this cork, we don't have to worry about it fraying or anything. So I don't care if that raw edge is standing out. So I'm going to stop just shy of it. I'm going to sew from here to here, from here to here. I'm going to sew my outer fabric on the top from here to here. And I'm going to sew from here, back stitch, stop, don't sew here, and sew across here. So all the way, all the way, all the way. Leave the no sew zone alone. Sew up to it, sew up to it. Make sure you back stitch when you sew up to those lines because that's how you're going to turn it wrong side out and that's going to help it not rip when you're turning all this through that little hole. You're not going to do anything in the corners. So I'm going to go make those stitchings and I'll be right back. All right, so it's looking like this. You can see I've sewn all the way down that side, all the way down that side, all the way across the top. Here I've sewn all the way across except for I've left the no sew zone open. So now it's time to box our corners. You guys are probably familiar with this, but you're going to grab a corner and open it up and match seam to seam. Push one to the left, one to the right. Make sure it's straight. Give it a clip. Go to the opposite one and you want to pay attention to the seam on the bottom. Make sure it's going the same way. So you're going to push that one that way. This one this way. Make sure it's straight. Clip. Same thing down here. Open up the corner. Seam to seam. One one way, one the other way. Clip. Go to the opposite corner. Make sure this seam is going the same way. So this one's got to go this way. Match those seams up. One one way, one the other way. Clip. And now you want to take it over to the sewing machine and sew those four corners closed. Now you can use a quarter inch, you can use three eighths, whatever you want, but just make sure you do them all four with the same seam allowance. Okay, so it should look something like this. You can see I've got all four corners boxed. Now we're going to reach through the bag. And this is why it's important to leave that zipper open. You know, go all the way to the other end and start turning this wrong side out. Now with this cork, it takes a little bit of maneuvering to get this all this bulk through, but it's absolutely doable. Okay, once you get it turned right side out, you're going to reach inside that hole with a bone folder or chopstick or whatever you're using to turn your corners and start pushing your edges out, your corners out. Focusing on those boxed corners. Check your corners. Now you can see 
how I have this slight little opening there and that's because I didn't stitch over the tab but if you did stitch over the tab this will be it'll just this little joint right here will be up here so it's fine either way and it looks nice either way I just prefer to try to miss it if I can and I missed it just slightly there so it just gives me a nice little finished edge all right so once you've got everything turned right side out we're gonna go look at that lining fabric and we still got to close up this little opening now you have a couple options here you can use that tape and then sew it you can just sew it you can use steam a seam you could use fabric glue i am just this is the bottom of the bag and i just stitch them closed every time so i'm going to take it over to the ironing board and i'm going to iron this so that it's nice nice and straight, nice and even, and then I'm just gonna stitch that closed. All right, so I have sewn the lining closed. You can see that. All that's left to do is to tuck this back inside. And again, make sure those corners are pushed out. I want to take it over to the ironing surface and give it another good press. You can see we've got our pocket on the inside. And there you have it. So we've got, there's two different versions. And again, if you want to make the keychain to put on there, um, you can, I'll have that linked in the description below the video. I used a little bit different sizing on this one than this one, which is why I changed this, but I like, I like this one better. Um, this one's just slightly a little too long, so it bows out when you box the corner. This one's a little bit less. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell notification so that you're notified every time there's a new video. I try to do one at least once a week, but sometimes life gets in the way. So thanks so much for watching, and until next time, never stop making. See you guys. Bye-bye.